Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. How are you doing? You know, uh, we just got done doing our bowl preview show. Uh, that's one of our more fun because Kyle. Kyle I, by the way, Kyle, I, I have to say, I crushed it. You I did. crushed it. You I did, I did I'll, a really I'll, good job I'll, on the. I'll, 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 I'll make them tougher next year. I'll okay. make them tougher next year. Now that I know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you you underestimated me. Uh, but that's okay. All right, Kyle. Wait, this is oh, I forgot to change the branding, so I'm gonna do that real quick. Uh, I'm gonna have to slide the Buckeye Huddle logo a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna, okay, we're we're good. There we go. Silly season, the return of silly season. Um, as he should. Yeah, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. Um, Kyle, we're just gonna catch up on some Ohio State news. I feel like. We got, we've been talking about recruiting and talking about bowl games and talking about transfer portal stuff. And I think we just needed some time to just l update some recruiting stuff and talk about coaching, talk about NIL. Cause that seems to be the only thing anyone wants to talk about right now. Um, yeah. Maybe we'll talk a little bit of Heisman. So we're just going to sort of a mixed bag of stuff here. All right. Well, probably the biggest, biggest news here is the Ohio state coaching changes here. Kevin Wilson, Kevin Wilson heading on over to be the head coach over at Tulsa and to, um, and that Ohio state is also expected to promote, uh, Keenan Bailey to the tight ends coach. Yeah. Keenan Bailey has been on the staff for a while. Um, very talented coach, uh, getting a promotion, a very much deserved good. promotion. Very good recruiter, by the way. Very good. So for Ohio State to be able to retain him and um, keep him on the coaching staff, I, th I think is probably a, a really good win for, for them on the recruiting trail. Yeah. Um, he's been kind of the tight end coach for a little bit now, if we're being honest. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, uh, I, I think, an excellent move by Day and crew. I, I like that they hire from within. Um, we still don't have an answer on who the offensive coordinator is. Um, Keenan Bailey is not going to be the offensive coordinator. That's that's a big that would be a big promotion to go yes. from quality control to, you know, to, to offensive coordinator. Jared, we know already. Uh, it's Fry. We all know it. I assume. Austin, that you are at least partially kidding. Uh, but yeah, it's I I'm on the I am on the train. I am on, of the opinion that it will be both Heartline and Fry. Um, one uh, Heartline's already the passing game coordinator. Uh, Fry's already the running game coordinator. Just throw a co in front of both both of them. Yeah, a pair of co-OCs hired from within because that is what Ryan Day likes to do. Um, and they both, I mean, Heartline absolutely deserves it. Um, and they brought in Fry not only to improve recruiting and development along the offensive line, but also to help with, you know, running schemes. And, you know, with Kevin Wilson now gone, Fry will have more influence on that. I assume he will become a straight up offensive coordinator, or at least a co-offensive coordinator. Um, Co-OC, but who calls the plays exactly? I mean, I feel like that's a rhetorical question. We all know like, oh no, we're going to have two guys be offensive coordinators. who have never been coordinators before. Oh no. He, he uh, Ryan Day is the offensive coordinator. Yes. You, he spent $2 million on a defensive coordinator to say, hey, you're in charge of the defense. Let me go focus on the offense. That's that's the deal there. Because Ryan Day is the offensive coordinator. The less he can think about defense, the better. Because he's head coach slash offensive coordinator slash quarterbacks coach. Don't let anyone fool you on that one. Um, so yeah, Ryan Day is doing his thing. So yeah, you can... Bring Brian Hartline up and train him and slowly bring him along and, you know, get him. It's absolutely working, Zach. 
It was absolutely working. Ryan Day's amazing. Y'all need to get off your bullshit. Um, yeah. And it's, right. yeah, it's, it, I, I think, uh, keeping Heartline, uh, that is also not true, Zach, except in big games. That is also not true. All right. Um, just a few, I know we just got done talking about recruiting in our, um, one of our most recent episodes here, but just a few just updates from some of the players we talked about. Uh, Ruben Owens decommitted from Louisville. Yeah, um, that's exact. We talked about that last week. That's exactly what we wanted. We did a building blocks episode last week. We said, hey, uh, the head coach, head coach left Louisville going to Cincinnati. Maybe Owens will decommit. It always seemed weird that the best running back in the country is going to Louisville. If he decommits, Ohio State might be in. We're looking. Uh, There's a good relationship there. They're trying to get him to visit. If they can get, if he can decommit and if he can visit, oh boy. Mm, but that's not the case, unfortunately, Jared. The they're still trying to buy recruiting classes down in a college station in Texas. I mean, they're successfully buying recruiting. <laughs> yes, yes, Esquire. <laughs> yes, Esquire. That um, oil, indeed. <laughs> I, you know, when people, and we're going to talk, we're going to talk about NIL here in a minute. When people keep talking about, oh, I say it's behind an NIL. Look at with, look at what Texas A&M's doing. Why can't Ohio State do that? Y'all see that like half of that class is decom or not decommitted. They're in the transfer in the portal, portal, right? Yeah. <laughs> is this, is this your God? Is this, is this how you want to be? Do you realize how big of a brick you all would be shitting if Ohio State had 10, 12, 15, however many players in the transfer portal right now? And you're still saying, why can't we be like Texas A&M? Guys, why can't we be like Texas A&M? Man, that grass sure is greener on the other side of that fence. Yeah, they got Ruben Owens. To be fair, we didn't say that. I mean, you didn't, Esquire. I, I still spend too much time on Twitter and on Ohio State message boards. You didn't say that. Believe me, there are people out there still saying, why can't we be more like Texas A&M? What is telling you that Texas A&M, what Texas A&M is doing is working? The sleep cats are cultured, exactly. Exactly. We, we, we are, we're a better, our discord server is a better type of fan. This, this is a fact. I'll say it. Uh, yeah. Proof of concept that Texas A&M did not go well. Yeah. It, it looks great on paper. Throw your oil money around, bring in all of the best players in the recruiting class. What could go wrong? We'll find out in year two, get more, get more data to further, further prove it, Jared. All right. Uh, another name here, Caleb Downs. Uh, this was a big talk with Caleb coming to Columbus um, versus the Michigan game here. Thought that maybe Ohio State had a chance here, like 50-50 perhaps here. Uh, but he did reconfirm his, reconfirm his commitment to Alabama, unfortunately. Yeah, uh, Ohio State did a great job even getting back into this conversation, quite frankly. Um, it, the fact that they got as is, is far as they did is is a huge credit. Yes. Yep. It was always right. an outside um, shot. It was always an outside shot. It was. And uh, the last one here, uh, Jermaine Matthews uh, takes himself off of um, flip watch here. Uh, Berm, um, Birmingham said that he talked with uh, Jermaine about about stuff going on with his recruitment. And he said, Buckeye's commitment wants to make sure fans know he's locked into his Ohio state pledge. Yeah, this was uh, so, okay. We did some bad news and we did some bad news. So there's some good news. Uh, we did yeah. talk about Jermaine Matthews as a, uh, a guy who was potentially going to be transferring or not, excuse me, not transferring decommitting 
and then committing at Miami. Um, this was of concern, um, but no, he uh, he goes on uh, Berm's talking stuff and uses that time to, you know, reconfirm, reaffirm, affirm, I think is the correct word there, reaffirm that he is in fact committed to Ohio State. Um, he went down to Miami because it's, and by the way, he's right, the responsible thing to do. It is the responsible thing to listen to what, let me put it this way. Kyle, I know, is happy with uh, where and who he works for. I am happy in my job, where and who I work for. Um, but if someone calls you and they say, well, we can, we can increase your salary by 20%. You listen. That doesn't mean you don't like your job. That doesn't mean you don't like the people you work for. It doesn't mean you don't like your boss. But you listen. That doesn't mean that you take the offer. Even if you go and you take the interview, which is what Jermaine Matthews did. He got a call. They made an offer. Jermaine Matthews went on the interview. He went on the interview and he said, thanks, but no thanks, which by the way, is also, a, this is career advice with Jared, <laughs> career advice with Jared. That's a thing you're allowed to do, by the way. I, so many people will be like, I don't want to take that interview. Why not? I don't know if I want it. Mm -hmm. Take the interview. Then see if they offer it, then decide if you want it. Yep. Cart before the horse on that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Austin says sometimes you do take the offer and that's okay, but sometimes the offers, sometimes the offer is better for you. In this case, it was not, even if you don't want the job, take the interview for experience a hundred percent. And also like maybe the grass doesn't seem greener. Maybe it really is greener. Also, mm -hmm. maybe it's not. And also don't always go chasing money. Sometimes the job that you're currently in, and now I'm talking about Jermaine Matthews again, Offers better training, offers better things other than salary. Salary yeah. is a whole, and deaf don't go chasing waterfalls. Yes, Esquire. We, we're like in a 90s mood here right now. We have mo money, mo problems. We have don't go chasing waterfalls. Total compensation package, which is... Something that we then might go back and uh, start talking about NIL. Use this as a transition transition into NIL conversation. It's a total compensation package. Yep. Just right, because uh, this place is offering more money doesn't mean you're getting more value. All right. This last weekend, Jared, the uh, Heisman oh, ceremony we, we, happened. We skip it. Okay. We, 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 I was going, I was going into the NIL conversation. Oh, well, this is real quick because, um, <laughs> and then, because I know we're going to take more time to talk about the NIL. I was just going to just quickly talk about the Heisman results here and how much if it's more, if it's any more plain obvious this year than any other year, but how, just how pointless the Heisman has become right now. It's, yeah. it's, it, it's all about how you, it's not your overall of what you've done for the year. It just so happens what you've done the past two or three games is, is all that matter. Yeah. It's, and, and, and that's, and that's what we've seen. That's what we've seen. Yeah. It, again, be the quarterback on one of the best teams in the country. It's a, and that's what all four, all four who were invited there. Three of the four are in the playoffs. One of whom, who I say it's going to play here in a few weeks, is not a, anything special of a quarterback. He's surrounded by amazing talent, and he's very good at making plays. He's like 26 years old. He's very uh, 25, 26. Um, so he's very level-headed. He brings a lot of, but he's not like a talented quarterback. And in that offense, that's what they need. Maybe. 
I mean, that's what that's what Nick Saban said for a long time, but he's getting elite quarterbacks now, too. So. Yeah. <sighs> Point yeah, is, all, 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 by the way, let me ask you, Kyle, Kyle, let me ask you this. Where were Hendon Hooker and Blake Corum? Uh, Hooker was fifth. And Corum was seventh. Why? Because they were clearly they... two of the best players this year, at least statistically. Where were they? Because their stats dropped off at the end of the year, right? A little. Yeah. yeah. They... Just like CJ Stroud. CJ Stroud for 11 weeks was the leading person in the, uh -huh. in the Heisman. Yeah. And then, but it, it wasn't that he had a bad game. He no, he just lost a terrible game. No, he just he was, lost. He, he lost. lost in his last it's, game, which disqualifies him for some reason. Of course, mm -hmm. then again, so Caleb Williams also lost in his last game, but, mo but we all know most of the votes were sent in by the time the championship games took place. So yeah, Austin gets it. I mean, if I mean, you get, hold on. Austin gets this. If you get injured, you're DQ'd. Blake Corum didn't miss any games. He barely played at Ohio State. So if you want to say you missed Ohio State, that's fine. Was well, it maybe maybe I'm maybe I'm thinking someone else. I thought there was a quarterback who got injured right at the end of the year, but still won it. Wasn't that the Florida State quarterback? Maybe when like 2000. Oh God, my my memory doesn't go back that far. But the fact you have to go back to 2000, Kyle. Mm -hmm. uh, Charlie, Charlie Ward. What, I was really it, remember that name. Right at the end of the year. Maybe, maybe I'm thinking of something else. But... I, I don't know, Kyle. But the, okay. the fact of the matter is, is that. You have. Stuart, did you just change Zach's name to Stuart's pimp hand and then tell him to come strong? Is that what just happened in the chat? <laughs> Should never have taught Stuart that changing someone else's name was a power he had. Yeah, I mean, but yeah, I, I think I think the Heisman, it's it's all about you you gotta be on the best team and one of the best teams, and you and you and you finish strong. That's that's Ultimately, all, all it comes down to. By the way, Blake Corum also did miss the Big Ten championship game. But as proven by Caleb Williams winning, most of the votes were already sent in at that time. That's the other thing. Yeah. Dudes just send in their votes whenever. They just send them in way ahead of time. Because I don't know why. So here, here's, here's other people who got first place votes. Other players who got first place. Uh, Drake May quarterback from north carolina i don't hate that pick uh, i don't agree with it but i don't hate it robin robinson running back in texas and again four. don't hate Hennix. it Hennix got that's, nine that's, first place votes that, that's ridiculous There's, kyle i'm not going to ask you to look this up but 100 percent all of those people came from the northwest which brings us to the other thing the regional voting in in the Heisman is ludicrous. Bryce Young had 17 first place votes. All of those people from the SEC, because they yep. they they saw enough of Stenson Bennett to know that the, he didn't deserve it. Yeah, because the Bryce voting is broken. Yes. Yes, yeah. Austin. Yes. Hundred percent. Yeah. All right. All right, let's go back to, let's talk about the NIL, Jared. I'm just going to say this, and I'm going to say this right off the top. If you believe that NIL at Ohio State is behind, falling behind, broken, whatever, I'm not going to tell you that you're wrong. I'm not going to do that. Because quite frankly, I believe NIL at Ohio State is behind, falling behind, and broken. Thank you, Austin. I'm not going to disagree with you. What I am going to say is this. The people who are telling you that it's broken, I'm like, I don't like to mention Zach Smith's name 
I don't like to mention Kirk Barton's name. These are not, these are people who I, I look down on. These are scummy individuals. I'll say this. The people who are telling you this are also affiliated with the foundation. The foundation being the foundation. That's it's, it's an NIL collective. They have ties. They have affiliations to these people. It is not a coincidence that Zach Smith goes on his podcast and is like, it's broken. It's broken. It's broken. I thought he was going to say Nevada buck. First off, we call him Stickney. And we don't, we don't, we don't use his, his, his rapper name. We call him Stickney here. They have ties to this organization. And it is not a coincidence that Zach Smith comes out and he's like, NIL at Ohio State's broken. NIL's Ohio State broken. And then literally the next day, the foundation receives their official affiliation with Ohio State. They they officially became nonprofit. Ohio State officially recognized them as an NIL partner. The next day, what a fucking coincidence. Wow. No coordination there. Listen, I have no evidence. This is all my opinion. I wouldn't give a dime to these people. Would I, I do not trust a single individual in charge of that organization. I know they have a bunch of Ohio State players on the board. No hate, no disrespect to any of them. I know they have a relationship with players currently on the team. No hate, no resentment, nothing negative towards any of those people. I know there are people on the board. I get it. But I, I do not trust the people who are actually properly in charge of this organization. We're talking about people with billions, in some cases, hundreds of millions of dollars, and they have fundraised next to nothing they have fundraised money that these people lose between their their uh couch cushions my bullshit meter is going off i don't have evidence but my bullshit meter is going off kyle yeah there's I don't know. I, I just, I need, I need more information. I need to know what it, it just, something just, I, I agree. Something just does not seem right here. It's just, I don't know. I'm, I'm very hesitant on it. I want to, I want to, I want to see more. I want to, I want to, I want to see more about this, but yeah, it just something, something just does not seem right about it. So I'm, I'm going to, I'll just kind of stand by and see, see what happens from here. But I, I'm, I'm going to give a dime to this right now. No, I want to remind everyone, by the way, and you can go on the Ohio State Athletics site. There are two other NIL organizations. If you feel like giving money to the NIL fund, there are there's the uh, O Foundation and I forget the name of the other one. There are other there are other organizations doing NIL for Ohio State who have been doing NIL for Ohio State for longer. Yeah, it's it's the the O Foundation and the uh, Cohesion Foundation. There you go. Uh, with it being a five hundred one C three, is it subject to Freedom of Information? I I do not believe so. Uh, they that all that does is make them a nonprofit. And as we talked okay. about, as we talked about um, in our our Monday episode, in our Monday episode, um, uh, not all nonprofits are created equal. Like all like all these bowl games are nonprofits, but pay their executives insane amount of money. And again, I have no idea if that's happening at the foundation or not. I'm not accusing them of that because I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I have no concrete evidence whatsoever. 
I am making no accusations whatsoever. I know nothing. I am stri strictly talking opinion and feeling. They And my feeling is, is that these guys do not pass the vibe check. Everything about it feels incredibly scummy to me. And I say that because they are fear-mongering. They use their partners, they use their, their tentacles, guys like Zach Smith and Kirk Barton, to go out there and to fear-monger. I know nothing. Never a truer word spoken. I The difference between me and some of these people is that I'm willing to say that. Mm -hmm. They go out there and they use their, their public facing partners to go out there and tell everyone it's broken. It's broken. NIL is broken. We're falling behind. Uh, Texas A&M has all the oil money and we, we, we'd have no money in Columbus somehow. Propaganda. Bingo, Zach. Bingo. They go out there and they tell you. And they tell you it's a problem. It's a problem. It's a problem. And then out of here comes the foundation presenting themselves as a solution. But they're all the same people. If the same people who are fear mongering are the same people who are selling you the solution. Then your bullshit meter should be going off. And I'm going to tell you this foundation sends out a tweet foundation says, Hey, Ohio state blogs, why don't you stick our logo and a link to our donation page on your website? And then they link a bunch of Ohio state blogs. What I, what I can't help but notice is that they, they tagged the Buckeye scoop who we all know is basically a message board filled with delusional morons at this point. Because everyone with a tiny bit of common sense in their head has just gone over to Buckeye Huddle where they do legitimate sports reporting. Mm -hmm. And guess what, Kyle? They didn't tag Buckeye Huddle. Nope. Interesting that they would tag Buckeye Scoop, but not Buckeye Huddle. You know, the does you know, that the, what what else do I need group, to tell you? The group that's allowed to go to Buckeye games. Yes. But the one that they tag is forbidden to is not yeah. allowed to credentialed Vera versus decredentialed. Interesting. That they would tag Buckeye Scoop, which is basically Stickney Barton and a bunch of delusional message boarders and literally nothing else other than are they, are they still trying to convince everyone that there's some Oracle over there? Are they still doing that? God, that was funny. Not even credentialed. Their credentials were taken away. They are banned. They were decredentialed, yes. not uncredentialed. Kyle and I are uncredentialed. The sloop cast is uncredentialed. Although we're affiliated with Buckeye huddle, which is credentialed. But Kyle and I, the Sloopcast, uncredentialed. Buckeye Scoop is decredentialed, banned, despised by the university, banned by the university. And yet this is who the foundation decides to tag. Gee, I wonder why. Have you ever thought of trying to get credentialed? Hell no. We, we would rightfully be told no. <laughs> we would rightfully be denied. <laughs> we would be denied. We would be denied. And I would say, yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, right, we, we, we tried. We tried. We, we thought we'd try. <laughs> it, it's what we would say. Uh, the best bet I have to being credentialed is if like Tony or Tom gets sick and they need someone to hold a camera. That is my best bet. And even then, they have like 10 better options than me. Worst they can do is say no. Honestly, I don't even know how to ask. <laughs> okay. Um, Buckeye Esquire, who is um, a patron to the podcast um, via Patreon. Patreon.thesleepcast.com. Always be plugging. Wrote a little something for me. 
He is our resident. Yeah, Esquire is not just a fancy name. He uh he is an honest to god lawyer, and he uh he wrote something for me to say about this. And so I'm going to be reading a quick note. How did he do in this loop picks? Listen, I said lawyer, not gambler. So I'm going to read this message from my attorney. He's not really my attorney. I don't know if I need to say that. <laughs> hey, attorney, do I have to say that? <laughs> um, in litigation, I'm now reading Buckeye Esquire. In litigation, what they're doing is called reptile theory. You prime the jury with buzzwords designated to generate a fear response. Think fight or flight, a.k.a. reptile portion of the brain. For litigation, those buzzwords are safety oriented. The strategy is to make the jury think only in terms of safe or unsafe. And the only cure to punish the defendant for making you feel unsafe or for failing to keep the plaintiff safe is to award a huge dollar figure. It is incredibly effective, says Buckeye Esquire. It moves the target from the law to some nebulous concept of safe versus unsafe and stymies critical thinking. He, Okay, th this is Jared commenting real quick. So their buzzwords are just like, they're failing, they're failing, they're failing, they're failing. And they're presenting themselves as the only solution. Um, here, they're priming you to think that your team, oh, he, he goes on to say this, my fault. All right, back into Buckeye Esquire's voice. Here, they're priming you to think that your team is failing and the only cure is to give them money to fix it. Don't think how reasonable is $10 per month auto draft to keep your team winning. Super reasonable. And see, it is not us telling you that it is respectable. You should have put respectable in quotes. It is respectable media on the Buckeye beat reporting it. He did put reporting in quotes. In a deposition, they force your witness to give answers that fit your narrative. Would you agree a construction on a construction site? Safety is the top priority. Would you agree slippery floors are dangerous, right? They're dangerous because people slip, right? When people slip, they can get hurt, right? If people are getting hurt from slipping on slippery floors, that's not safe, is it? You can't disagree with them without sounding like an idiot. Now replace safety with winning. Of course everyone wants to win. The question is not, respectable was Bucknuts. Yeah, and I know, uh, respectable. We're talking about it right now, right? We're talking about, is NIL broken, yada, yada, yada. Yes. Um, the point here is that they're telling you NIL's broken. And I'm not even trying to have that conversation right now. I'm not even trying to have that conversation. Can we call this segment Esquire's courtroom? We'll work on the branding. We'll work on the branding. Yeah. So they're telling you this is the problem and that the only answer is us. Even if they aren't saying that, they're implying the shit out of it. They're absolutely implying the shit out of it. There are yeah. two other organizations that you can donate money to. And quite frankly, you probably need a fourth. Because I do not trust the foundation at all. I believe the people who are running it are totally self-interested. They are interested in self-promoting. And I wouldn't mind seeing their books in a couple of years. just to make sure everything's on the up and up. I ask, are they this stupid to want to stoop to Texas A&M level insanity? As we talked about, yes, they do want to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, Texas A&M has already proven that that doesn't work. 
They've proven that it doesn't work. Yet, they want, that is, ex that is, is exactly what the foundation would like to do. The foundation would love to do nothing more than to buy recruits the way Texas a and is buying recruits. Despite the fact that it it's already proven not to work. Why? Because they are more interested in controlling that much money, distributing that much money, deciding who gets it, where it goes, and having the influence and the authority to control that money. They are attempting to buy power with your money. See a Buckeye player, maybe just slip them a hundred. Yeah. No, no one has to know. That's not legal, by the way. So, just do it in cash. <laughs> yeah. So something, something major is um, happening as we're, we're talking here, Jared, which is why I'm kind of reading a few things here. Um, uh, Mississippi, um, uh, Mississippi State coach Mike Mike Leach, mm -hmm. uh, in a very serious condition right now. Um, appears that he was um, airlifted to a hospital, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of rumors going around like he had a massive heart attack or a stroke or no, something. Let's not but worry. It's, let's not let's not worry yeah, about the it, rumors, especially since. We're recording this on Sunday night. We won't release this until that earliest Tuesday. Um, so yeah, but it's, I'm sure it's I'm sure much. there's better information out for anyone who's listening to this right now than we can currently provide you. Um, yes. But yeah, it's definitely prayer, prayers to him. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully everything turns out um, for him. But yeah, it's. Yeah, not 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 good news um, coming here Sunday night here. Yeah, I, I feel for his family. Um, mm -hmm. I feel for his family. Um, yeah. Kyle, any... I, I, I'll, I'll keep talking in circles if I keep talking about the NIL stuff. Yeah. Um, I've already, quite frankly, started talking in a bit of circle, but don't, don't trust that the person who's telling you is the sky is falling is also selling umbrellas. I guess is what I'm trying to tell you. Very true. Very true. All uh, right. Yeah. I think I stole yeah, that one from Esquire as well, by the way. <laughs> just so just so we're on the up and up. I think I also stole that from Esquire. Did he steal it from somewhere? You have to ask him. You can ask him by joining our Discord server, discord.thesloopcast.com. Uh, he's at Buckeye Esquire in the <laughs> Discord server. You can ask him yourself. Um I, I stole what a transition. Thank you. A pro's pro. Thank you. Um, no, Esquire, they have to come to the Discord server to ask you. That's the deal. I stole your line about, I think it was your line, about um, skies falling, selling umbrellas, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, discord.thesloopcast.com. If you want to be like Buckeye Esquire and, you know, contribute money to us, what a... Kyle, it feels really weird to talk about the Patreon after I just got done talking about people asking for money and how they're shitheads. <laughs> just, just join the Discord. Just, quiet, <laughs> just join us on the Discord first. But I'm just like that money goes straight to Kyle and I. Like I, I'm honest about it. It actually goes into. In all honesty, it goes into the show. Most of the money goes right back into the show. Um, there's. We're not a nonprofit by, we're not a nonprofit by uh, definition, but we don't make any money. So <laughs> where do we apply? Um, all right, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Not really. I think we've pretty much, pretty much covered it here. Um, just, we're still going to see a lot of the coaching carousel going around, still stuff with the portal. Just a lot of, lot of moving, lot of moving um, parts going on. Yeah. Um, Buckeye Esquire says, plug the World Food Bank. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Um, I, th it happened on Saturday. Uh, if you look down in the Discord chat window, I'm showing it. Um, Saturday was Thankmas, which uh, if you're on YouTube, uh, especially on the video game side of YouTube, um, you probably know who Jack Septicai is. 
If not, it really doesn't matter. Um, every year he raises money for a different charity. Uh, it's a fundraiser he does live on YouTube. And this week, uh, or excuse me, this year, he was raising money for the World Central Kitchen, which is a nonprofit organization that provides meals following natural disasters and international crises. Uh, founded in 2010 following the Haitian earthquake, this year alone, World Central Kitchen has provided meals to Ukrainian civilians, victims, uh, Hurricane Julia, those displaced by floods in Kentucky, Pakistan, and several other places. Um, if you're looking to give money somewhere this Christmas, um, I will provide the uh, Tiltify, which is a, a donation platform. I uh I will don't I will uh, provide a donation link to the thank miss because even though the official telethon is on Saturday, uh, you can contribute I think for most of the month, um, and it will still go to the organization. So f forget our Patreon uh for now. Go go give money to people. Every three dollars. Yes, there's the Tiltify link um, there as well. I will, like I said, also put it in the show notes. Um, I will, um, like I said, also put that down in the show notes. Um, three Every $3, every $3 donated provides a meal. Every $3 donate provides a meal to a person in the middle of a crisis. In the United States, in Ukraine, all around the world. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Um, All right. Kyle, do you have, I already asked you about Kyle's corner, didn't I? Yeah. All right. So that's it. That's the end of today's show. Tonight's ending music will be playing the vapors. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is playing the vapors. Mm -hmm.